Hey guys, you're listening to the Time of Football Podcast, and this is our analysis of the AFC East prior to the 2018 NFL season. Glad you're joining us for another edition of the Time of Football Podcast. We're talking about each division in football. We've already wrapped up the NFC. We're taking care of the AFC South and the AFC North. We've got two divisions left in the AFC, and we're going to start off with the AFC East, um, which seems like a, a division that's only has one team in it for the last 14 years or so, but well, except that one outlier in 2008. We're going to go ahead and just talk about the other three teams as well. Why not? You know. And joining us for this podcast, giving us our analysis of the AFC East is Ryan Harris. So Ryan is a Miami Dolphins fan um, through thick and thin, regardless of how good or bad they are. And we just wanted to get him on the podcast because it seems like all everybody's a Patriots fan. That's what I, I, I don't know. That's what I see. I don't know. And instead of bringing some Patriots fans that I knew on the podcast, why not bring in a fresh face and a new perspective on things, being someone that's hasn't won the division and since 2008. It's a great yeah. year, though. It was a great year, going from 115 to 11 and 5. Um, R.I.P. Tony Sperano, so. True. Um, but, Ryan, how you doing, my man? I'm good, I'm good. Kind of optimistic, but also not. At the same time, it's the Patriots division. Hey, it's, hey, you never know. What... Maybe this is the year that Tom Brady is doesn't do as well, according to... I feel like everybody says that every year. Like, there's one person out there that says, yeah, Tom Brady's not going to do good this year. The only year he hasn't done well and won them the division is the year he tore his ACL in week one. Oh, yeah. And then the Dolphins won the division. Well, that's true. That's, that's true. the only reason why. That's true. Ten years. Ten years ago. Um, But being a Dolphins fan... um. We got you on this podcast to talk about the AFC East. The Bills, the Jets, the Patriots, and the Dolphins. We're going to talk about them in that order. Let's start off with the Buffalo Bills. Um, so, Ryan, for the very first time, because we didn't have to stop this recording for the podcast and start over again, give us your analysis of the Buffalo Bills. I think they'll be the weakest team in the division this year, without a doubt. They were terrible at passing last year. I think they've ta- they've regressed in passing. They've got a, a worse quarterback. Could be better in the future. We don't know. We have to see how he plays out, but he's young and raw. Their rushing attack is going to get weaker. Mm-hmm. It's getting up there in age. They've lost a lot. But they are rebuilding and working for the future. They've got some good young players. I think they're starting to build a team. Could be good for the future. But they'll try to go out there and just win a few ball games this year, maybe upset the Patriots. As far as their quarterbacks go, they started or they drafted Josh Allen, traded up to number seven overall to draft him. But there's also another guy that people are sleeping on. That's AJ McCarron that they signed a free agency. Who do you think is going to start? I know me personally. I'd love to see AJ McCarron start, give him a chance. Maybe he maybe he do something. But it'd also be great for Josh Allen to learn behind him for a few games, at least instead of being thrown into it in the first game. Yeah. Um. Because he's from a small school, he's got to learn a lot. He's got an amazing arm, but not the accuracy to go along with it. But mm. I'd love to see AJ McCarron get the start. Yeah. Do you think that this is a better upgrade as far as a quarterback go than Tyrod Taylor? I think it's a downgrade. I I really like Tyrod Taylor, not only because I'm a Virginia Tech fan, but like he's always been pretty solid. I think he could definitely take you to the playoffs, like he did last year for the Bills. And I feel like I don't know. He's not going to take the Browns to the playoffs, but. He'll do something for him. So I think they're definitely taking a downgrade by letting him go. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. You think Peterman's in that conversation at all? That's what they say. I don't know. <laughs> Not at all. Nope. Well, always remember for the five interceptions. It was a great game to watch. Yeah, it was, actually. It was... I had the Chargers defense that week. It was awesome. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you you did really well that week. So, <laughs> um, Tremaine Edmonds is a guy that they drafted – Seemed like he was going to be top 10 going in the NFL draft. He dropped it. He dropped down to number 16. Um, besides being a Virginia Tech fan, you like Tremaine Edmonds? I really do. Um, only thing about him is he's super raw. But it's crazy to think because he's only 19 years old. He's getting drafted. Should have been drafted top 10. He just has that. He could be 
the best linebacker in this draft or the best player in this draft if he develops well. But he's so young and he's so athletic. I'd love to see him. I think I think he's going to be really good if he gets with the right coaches. Yeah. And that's what I've been hearing from everybody else. But at Virginia Tech, he was great and so was his brother. But it's uh this this team overall, we were talking about it before the podcast, before our our first run at recording this, which is actually right now, just so you guys know. Mm-hmm. Um we we're talking about teams that made the playoffs last year that may not make it again. And the Bills are definitely on the top of my list um, as potential teams. And do you feel like this team is going to make the postseason in 2018? No. Mm. I, my record, I have them at probably, I'm going to have them at 5 and 11 this year. Okay, 5 and 11. 5 and 11, not, uh, not even close to 8 and 8, 9 and 7. No. I think it'll be scraping the bottom. Uh, now, granted, it was an awesome moment seeing that locker room erupt, making the playoffs for the first time in a long time. Um, but they depended on that one play from Cincinnati to beat Baltimore to make it to the playoffs. You can't really depend on things like that every single year. And I don't think that they've gotten to the level yet where they can control their own destiny in making the playoffs. Uh, just not yet. But maybe 2019? Do you see them? I can see that. I think Josh Allen will have to develop a lot, but I think he could get there. Yeah, the strong arm man. Um, but um, as far as the New York Jets, which is which is the next team we're going to talk about, what's your analysis on them? I actually think the Jets could be the biggest surprise out of this division this year. I hate the Jets. They're my most hated team in all of NFL, mm-hmm. just because right. of the rivalry. But I, I just get behind the Jets this year. I think they're going to be strong for some reason. I don't know what it is. I think I, I like Sam Darnold a lot. They made some really good pickups. They also got they have three quarterbacks that could start, and I like all three. What yeah. do you think about their quarterbacks? No, you nailed it. Um, three potential quarterbacks that could start. That's um, I'm assuming in McCown, Darnold, and Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Um, I like that as well. I think Bridgewater has a least chance to to start. Really? Um, I think it's beneficial. I feel like I would start Sam Darnold right off the bat. Yeah. Don't even waste time because I'm just looking at the trend of quarterbacks, and I've said it before on this podcast, quarterbacks that start all 16 games, their rookie season, when they go into their sophomore season, they just take off. Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, Carson Wentz. Sure. Um, like well, Maybe not 2018, but what's the potential for Sam Darnold in 2019 if he starts all 16 games? A lot of the people you just named were also high draft picks. So I think... Sam Darnold was the third pick. Right. If you draft a quarterback that high, you're going to start him. You're not going to sit him behind. It's not like Aaron Rodgers where you draft him at the 26th pick and you let him sit behind a proven starter. None of them are proven starters. They could win you a game or two, be great backups. But Sam Darnold is the one you should be starting every single game and seeing what he's got. And I I love Sam Darnold. I think he, he's my second favorite quarterback coming out of the draft. Mm. For sure. After Baker? Mm-hmm. I love Baker. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I, uh, okay, I know that a lot of people are big fans of Baker Mayfield. I am too, but I, I thought Sam Darnold was the best quarterback in the draft. Mm. Um, but, I, I mean, everything fell into place for, for the Jets. It was an easy decision once Baker was taken, once um, Barkley was taken. It was easy for the Jets to go grab Sam Darnold. Um, so I really like him. But how do you think he's going to perform – with the receiving core around him, um, you know, with Robbie Anderson and and Jermaine Curse, um, I think they're solid receivers. They're not great, but they can definitely make the catch. And they got Terrell Pryor, who we know Terrell Pryor is not the greatest. <laughs> Last year he didn't really do great at Washington, but he's still still an athletic freak. I'd love to see what comes out of him. Mm-hmm. Right, other names on here, Charles Johnson was a player in Minnesota for a good bit. Jermaine Curse is solid, good slot. It's serviceable receivers, and they're all veteran receivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Defensively, you as a Dolphins fan, are you afraid to play the Jets two times a year, seeing their defense two times a year? Um, they got rid of Demario Davis. Um, he went up to New Orleans, but they brought in Avery Williamson, as a replacement at linebacker. Um, what do you think about this Jets defense overall? 
it's definitely getting weaker every year. But uh, the Tremaine Johnson, good signing for them. Jamal Adams, even though it was one year last year, he still scares me. Mm-hmm. Great safety. Uh, Leonard Williams. They got a bunch of really talented guys, but I, I just love to see how they play. Yeah. Um, some of them really do scare me when they play the Dolphins. We're going to continue talking about the AFC East, but before we get into that, I want to talk to you guys about um, something incredible that we do at Time of Football, and that's Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way that you can sponsor your favorite content creator. So think of it like a GoFundMe um, but it's every single month you kind of pledge however much you want towards like your favorite videographer, favorite podcaster, um, YouTuber, whatever it is. Um, And if you, well, here at Time to Football, we actually have perks for you guys. So if you pledge $5 a month, then you'll get a free Time to Football t-shirt. And there's going to be lots and lots more uh, perks coming out in the future. But if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, you can read up on everything your um, revenue goes towards, all the projects that we've got planned. And um, also, this is something new that we started, Patreon, so um, we definitely want to spread the word. So uh, that's patreon.com slash time to football, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash time, the number two, football. If everyone that was listening to this podcast just pledged a dollar a month. We would have enough revenue to grow Time to Football tremendously. Patreon.com slash Time to Football. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I say, oh, no, because we're going to talk about the Patriots next. The team has that, that has dominated this division the team that has made it seem like there is no such thing as an AFC East because it seems like guaranteed every single year they're going to make the playoffs. Now, granted, you'll get, you know, one victory, one upset victory out of the Jets, the Bills, the Dolphins, you know, here and there. But the the New England Patriots, the dynasty, how do you think they're going to do in 2018? The Dark Empire. That's what I call them. <laughs> Same old, same old. I think they're going to win the division handily. Probably, I'm going to say a 12-4 and four record. Okay, respectable. That seems like what they, what they get every single year. Um, has this team gotten better or worse? I don't know. I'm looking at the roster. I think it got a little bit worse. But it's also like they got a different dynamic about them. I think part of me thinks they're going to switch to more of a running style. Because they have an abundant amount of running backs now. This is true, yeah. I, I like Sony Michelle. Not as much as other people, but I I like him. Rex Burkhead. I, I really like Jeremy Hill. Yeah. yeah. Power back for him. Could be, could be something. But, I mean, it doesn't matter who's the running back, who's the re- receiver. They got Tom Brady. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to think that, because there's reports coming out of training camp that Jeremy Hill and Mike Gillisley are fighting for a roster spot. I'm thinking to myself, well, these are two, I mean, they're not like the greatest backs ever, but they're two solid backs. And to think that they have to fight to be in that Patriots backfield with Sony Michelle, Rex Burkhead, James White, that just shows you how talented of a backfield that the Patriots have. Um, but yeah, you nailed it. They have Tom Brady. So does anything else really matter? Um, they drafted Isaiah Wynn at number 23, which, you know, if you hate the Patriots, that sucks for you because they solidify their offensive line even more when it seems like nobody else can even sack Tom Brady, um, defensively. So last year they had a lot of injuries and that might have been the demise for them. Um, also maybe sitting Malcolm Butler, but let's not mention that, um, they lost a lot of pieces, but they also gained Adrian Claiborne on their defensive line. Do you think that this defense, being a Dolphins fan, and I'm going to go ahead with this perspective again, being a Dolphins fan offensively, do you think that the Dolphins offense is scared or should be worried of the Patriots defense? 
Honestly, I don't think so. I mean, last year in the first six, seven games, the Patriots looked terrible on defense. Then they turned it around and they became a great defense again. But I'm looking at the roster, I see a lot of older players. They're still elite players, like Devin McCourty. He's getting up there in age, still elite. That was cool that they signed Jason McCourty as well, mm-hmm. just having McCourty brothers. I, I think like that it. was pretty cool. Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, I think uh, Stephon Gilmore, I think, is still pretty solid. He was d- solid with Buffalo. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and maybe last year he wasn't like the top of the top, but Bill Belichick along with Tom Brady, it's going to be a dynasty for a long time. They make the playoffs, you said, 12-4. and four. Obviously, that's going to be playoffs, if not a first-round bye. Um, but do, do you think any other team has a chance of dethroning them at all? I don't think they'll make the Super Bowl, but I think they'll make the playoffs at 12-4. and four. Mm-hmm. Uh, But I think someone will knock them out. Gotcha. Don't know who it's going to be yet, um, but how I'm seeing this year go out, like, Tom Brady's 40 now? Yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh, I think this probably is going to be his last year. Yeah, I think he's actually 41. Uh, he was 40 last year. Yeah, he's 41. Oh, no, he's 40. He's turning 40. Well, it depends on when you listen to this podcast, because his birthday's August 3rd. Let's just say that. Um, so he's about to be 41. He'll be, 40 when the, he'll be 41 when the season starts. True, yeah. Um, and, and, and we're going to get more into this when we talk about the Miami Dolphins, but I've heard that a lot of people, they like being on the Patriots because it's that potential to win a Super Bowl, but they don't have as much fun as like playing for a coach. Like for instance, let's, let's talk about Danny, Danny Amendola stays in the division, went for the Patriots to the Miami Dolphins. He said that compared to New England, you know, Adam Gase is one of the boys. You know, he's younger. He's like he's he's a motivator type coach, and like you just want to play for one of your boys. Mm-hmm. Whereas in New England, you know, everything's just like so like structured, and it just doesn't seem like it's as much fun. Do you think that's a downside for the Patriots? It's at the end of the day, it's still the job. Yeah, that they're there to work. And sometimes the workplace just isn't fun. That's what it is. But they're out there winning games, making themselves more popular, getting them more money outside of all of that with endorsements and everything going on. So I don't think they care too much at the end of the day. Because, I mean, Danny Mendola's probably getting paid the same amount, maybe less. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think at the end of the day it comes down to pay. Yeah, for sure. And that potential to win the Super Bowl as well. Mm Mm-hmm. But Ryan, I think this is your favorite part of the podcast now. Oh gosh! Let's talk about your beloved Miami Dolphins. Um, just give us your analysis of this team. I think we're going to be improved to last year for sure. We're, I think we're going to be a lot better than a six and ten record. I love their signings so far this year. It's a bunch of solid signings. I love uh, Micah Fitzpatrick. I thought was an amazing draft pick. That was really good. Yeah, you can play so many spots in the um, in the defense. Um, I love Danny Mandola, Frank Gore, depth, depth picks. Mm-hmm. I think we realize that we can compete for a playoff spot if Tannehill stays healthy at the end of the day. And I think we've been bolstering our roster to compete for a playoff spot. Um, our offensive line, I think it's been the best it's been in the last 10, 15 years. It's crazy, but... Mm-hmm. And that's always been the biggest thing with the Dolphins is... Can they get that guard play to help the run and not have Tannehill get destroyed every game? Because he's, what, him and Angel Luck, the most sacked quarterbacks, or most yeah. hurried quarterbacks the last 10 years. Right, yeah. So, I'm a big proponent of line play. And last year, look at the Eagles, when they won the Super Bowl. Had arguably the best offensive line, and they did have the best defensive line. Mm-hmm. And Dolphins have bolstered both. Um, I, I, pref- I like Robert Quinn. I think he's going to be a solid pick. He's not going to be as good as he was two, three years ago where he was the best player in the NFL. Right. I'm just, I'm more excited for this year than I was last year. But also I want to hold back because one injury could just end that all. Uh, we've seen we've seen it before. We saw it last year. Um, there's a lot of different factors about this team that I wanted to break down. Let's start with, with the offense and the quarterback position. So Ryan Tannehill, I'm a big fan of Ryan Tannehill. Um, athletically, he's gifted, great arm. 
Um, and he wins games. He's at, you know, he's catapulted. Maybe he didn't start in the playoffs, but because he got injured, but he helped the Miami Dolphins reach the playoffs in 2016. Now, a lot of people were saying that with the number 11 overall pick in the NFL draft, you could draft a quarterback. And at that point, at number 11, the only really good one that was around is Lamar Jackson. Um, do you think that maybe they should have drafted a quarterback like everybody else is saying? Or do you think that Fitzpatrick was the right choice? Stick with Tannehill for, for at least this year. Um. I think at the end of the day, we made the right choice. If we could have, I would have loved to trade up and gone and got a quarterback. Or if one fell to us, Lamar Jackson, I don't think is a pure quarterback. would be great for our, our scheme. But Josh Rosen would have fallen one more spot because he got picked one pick before, correct? Yeah, number 10. So Josh Rosen, we would have loved Sam Darnold or Baker. I know there was talk about Josh Allen. Which I would not have preferred it, but like, it's still... It would have helped their team. Mm-hmm. I'm behind Tannehill. I, I like him, but also looking forward to the future because I know he's he's good enough to get you to the playoffs and maybe get lucky and get to the Super Bowl. But he's not an elite quarterback who's just gonna go out there and win you every game like Russell Wilson. Yeah, he reminds me of Andy Dalton. They're very very similar players. He needs a good supporting cast around him to get you there. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Um, the run game. How how much do you think that um, they're going to put in Frank Gore into the scheme? Do you think that with him aging, mm-hmm. um, seems like Kenyon Drake is going to be their main back. Well, if you had to say a ratio, like how much do you think Kenyon Drake would play? Do you think Frank Gore is going to be an asset? Do you think he's going to be an, an impacting player for the run game? I'm going to say a 65-35 share. Okay. Yeah. Maybe 60-40 would probably be more realistic. I think um, Kenny Drake's definitely going to get the ball 60% of the time, and I see Frank Gore getting it 40% of the time. Do you think that uh, maybe even Damian Williams would uh, get it over Frank Gore? Or I don't think so. I, pr- I think we're going to put Frank Gore over him because why would you go out and sign Frank Gore, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's still a workhorse. Cause I remember last, last year there was a game in Buffalo – in the snow where he had 36 carries in that game. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, he averaged like 3.6 or 7 yards a carry, but still, like 36 carries, that's a lot. Um, so he can still get it done, and definitely it'll be a good relief for, for Kenyon Drake to come out. You know, maybe Frank Gore comes in on third downs and whatnot. Um, now, branching off into this offense, they signed Danny Amendola, but they got rid of Jarvis Landry. Um, do you think Amendola, Kenny Stills, like you? You think they they still have a solid receiving core? I feel like I was in the minority of a lot of Dolphins fans. I thought Jarvis Landry was supremely overrated. Really? Yes. Really? I, I love Jarvis Landry, but I also realize he's overrated. Okay. Okay. I think Danny Amendola can do the same thing. Maybe not as well as Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, I still think, is one of the best slot receivers in the NFL. He cannot play outside so i think this year for the dolphins i'm i'm actually excited i think danny mandola is gonna be a solid pickup i like him a lot putting in the slot kenny stills was actually one of the highest rated receivers last year based on grade yeah he was he was really good it's just if he can catch the ball sometimes yeah that's true that's it's kind of important and then Dante Devontae parker's had his glimpses where he could be Oh yeah, I look like Julio, but I play like Terrell Pryor. Yeah, that's Devontae Parker. Every single year, ever since people got, um, or he he was drafted in 2015, every everybody's been saying, "Yeah, dude, he's gonna be like a late round fantasy football steal." Every year, every single year, people say that. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think so. Like, I think last year, or a couple years ago, he might he might have like two or three games where. Mm-hmm. You know he'll he'll be pretty good, and that's when the moment you trade him, um, trade him away. But uh, I'm gonna okay. I really love this pick that the Dolphins got uh, at tight end Mike Gesicki. Mm-hmm. I love that pick. He's a I, 
just because he's an athlete, and I love tight ends that are athletes. What do you think of Gasecki? Um, I I really liked Gasecki going into the draft because who's not gonna love a tight end that runs like Vernon Davis, two inches taller than Vernon Davis, bench presses so much. But the thing I love most about him is Adam Gase when he has an athletic tight end. Remember? Adam- yeah, but it seems like a sick he's going to be their starting tight end. I love that pick a lot. Um, let's talk about the defense. So, well, okay, so the offensive line and the defensive line, you just talked about the trenches. It all starts in the trenches. Um, that's how the Eagles have uh, won a Super Bowl, and the NFL is a copycat league. Mm-hmm. So look at what the best team is doing. Mimic that. I think the Dolphins have been trying to do that with their defensive ends. Yeah, sure. bringing in Robert Quinn uh, via trade, um, Cameron Wake. You think that Cameron Wake is still going to be the same player? He's going to be more of like coming in, you know, different downs and different situations. I think he's going to be coming in on different downs because I think they're going to copy the Eagles, like you said. We have a lot more versatility now. We have William Hayes. We had him last year, but William Hayes, Charles Harris, Andre Branch, Robert Quinn, and Cameron Wake. All pass rushers, just depending on the situation, who's going to go in, who's not. Charles Harris we drafted first round two years ago. Love to see how he does. But a lot of them are also run stoppers, and that's the biggest th- weakness for Cameron Wake is he cannot stop the run. Um, secondary wise, you think that this is going to be um, something that can, or, or, or a group of players that can affect maybe Tom Brady's game and throw him off, get a few interceptions off of him. I think I think they're serviceable. I think we have two starters. They're not going to shut down anybody, but I, I like Cordell Tankersley and Xavier Howard. It's just if they can stay healthy, that's a big question mark. And then you got um, Fitzpatrick. Um, Fitzpatrick out here is he going to play slot corner? He's going to play defensive back? Safety? Where's he going to play? You know? Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, him and Rashad Jones are going to make a good safety tandem. So I think our, our secondary is a lot stronger. Defensive line is a lot weaker. So teams are going to pound the ball more against us. And then our linebackers... Uh, that's that's a story. <laughs> yeah, uh, but hopefully they'll be g- good enough, you know, to at least challenge the Patriots. So, wrapping up the AFC East, if you had to rank each team and kind of, I, I know we haven't like sat game by game and looked at each schedule, but talent wise, if you could give a rough estimate on what the record is going to be for each team, what's the record? I have actually looked at the schedule a little bit. And this year, the AFC East, I'm pretty sure they play the AFC South, which already a weak division. You really There's two strong teams and then two pretty weak teams outside the division. They all play poorly outside the division. And then on the other side, we play the NFC North. Three great teams. And then the Bears. And the Bears. They're coming up. They're coming up. Yeah, yeah, they're working on it. Um, but actually, I see Patriots 12-4. and four. Okay. I see a tie in second between the Jets and the Dolphins, both at seven and nine. Okay. And the Bills at four and twelve. I could or five see and that. eleven. Five and eleven. Five and eleven. Let's give them five and eleven. Um, I could definitely see that. Um, do you think that any one of them is gonna pull off an upset against the Patriots this year? I mean, Miami is actually. I think the last three years they've beaten the Patriots once in the last three years. Yeah, I, mean, I remember. Uh, was it last year? The it was that Monday night game. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Um, Dolphins really play the Patriots well every year. I think Gase has kind of has knows what's going on with that team. I can only see. I don't think the Bills can do it. Bills aren't strong enough. Yeah. I think the Patriots are gonna mess them around, mess around with them. They're gonna beat them up. Jets. Mm-hmm. I can see them upsetting other teams. I don't think they'll upset the Patriots. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So. Um, so there's your analysis of the AFC East. Um, but wrapping up, I should have asked you this question beforehand, so you could have thought about it. But then I realized, why not just put you on the spot? Oh, and if you take two minutes to think about it, just two minutes of silence, that's fine. That's fine. We'll just keep the keep the thing rolling. But um, I ask every single guest on the show what their favorite football moment is so whether it's the nfl college football you used to play football like what is your favorite moment in football Mm. dang you really put me on the spot yeah it's a tough one it's a tough one 
I'm when it comes to sports, it's weird because I have my teams that I follow and I love, but also I get. I think everybody has gets this weird happiness of seeing the teams you hate lose. Mm, I agree. So when I saw the Patriots lose the Giants and just that catch the off the helmet, and then they go down and score a touchdown, that one's up there. But I think just the hatred and like fueling that hatred and making me feel so much better because my team's terrible, but this team that I hate just had their hearts ripped out. I think yeah. that's my favorite part. I love that. I love that. Just me being a Falcons fan, I don't. I wouldn't say I really hate any other team. I know that the Saints are our biggest rival, and like if they, you know, make the playoffs, win the Super Bowl, like I'm fine with that. But like, I totally understand. Like, mm-hmm. there's just some sort of satisfaction, especially like when your team beats your rival. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember being a Falcons fan and seeing um, it was Thursday night football last year when Deion Jones grabbed an interception and Drew Brees tried to start a game-winning drive, but Deion Jones just grabbed it, fell back, and it was just it was just good. I wasn't, like, screaming, like, yeah, I'll take that. I was just like, ah, <laughs> that's nice. And then you have those friends that are fans of that team, and it's just like, let's jab at them a little bit. Yeah, My yeah. It's yeah, never good, but we yeah. beat you this time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very passive aggressive when it comes to that kind of so, sort of stuff. So I'll just like, next time I see them, I'm just like smiling at them, you know, just like, what's up, man? How you doing? You know, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, take that, take that now. Like, I'm pretty chill about it. I know? mean, last year's, I, I don't hate the Falcons, but when, when, we, when the Dolphins did beat the Falcons last year, it was, it oh, was yeah. nice because everybody around me is always like, you're a Dolphins fan. I feel so bad for you. It, oh, it's terrible. I was just like. We won. We're six and ten, but we beat you guys. That's all that matters. Man, just something about giving up leads in the Falcons because we were up seventeen to nothing, mm-hmm. and then you know the the mighty Jay Cutler. Oh, good good times, man. It's over now. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, well, Ryan, I appreciate you being on. Um, Having me on. Yeah, man. Um, any uh, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, not really. But I'll definitely uh, hit you up on Patreon. You guys should do that too. Oh, thank you. Idea. Thank you. It's a great idea. Uh, definitely. Um, so, Ryan, thank you so much again for joining us. And appreciate you guys listening. Just so you guys know, uh, as we're wrapping up, I'm going to go ahead and plug some stuff. Um, we have this podcast up on YouTube and on um, iTunes. So, if you're listening to this on iTunes, and just know we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash time to football. And vice versa, if you are listening on YouTube, just know we have a podcast on iTunes. Just search Time to Football. But regardless, on the podcast app, when you search for our podcast, Time to Football, make sure you rate and review this podcast. Give it five stars. Help a brother out because it kind of tells us that you guys love this content that we're coming out with. And we're just going to keep on um, coming out with more and more of this content. Uh, But also... Leave us a review. Let us know what you think. Um, Anything we can do better, anything that you want us to talk about, we definitely take all those into consideration and we will give you the content that you fans deserve. Um, Thanks again for joining us and we'll wrap up the AFC as we talk about the AFC West next week. All right, guys, take care.